Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello. This is Carl Sussman with Insurance Hour. Thank you so much for joining us today. As you know, we are here to help you with your insurance-related questions and help make insurance more understandable, help you try and get the best you can out of your policy, and as importantly, set your expectations correctly. You can call in anytime at 559-656-0317 or send an email to questions at insurancehour.com. If you need to talk to somebody right away, you can also dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance, and boom, you will hopefully, hopefully, get to somebody right away that can help you. If you miss any part of this show, remember you can also catch it on YouTube as a replay, or you can catch it on your favorite podcast, aggregator, application, all that other good stuff. It's pretty hard to look and not find us. We are everywhere. We're syndicated across California currently to over 30 million listeners. And with that, let's jump right in. Today, I think we're going to focus primarily, depending on who calls in and where they decide to take us, on auto insurance and ways that we can save money on our car insurance. Car insurance is one of those funny things that you have to have it, and at the same time, you're angry you have it, and at the same time, you're angry because you have to pay for it. And we tend to see these rates for auto insurance going up over time. Even though our car might be getting older, and that should, co- may, that should mean our insurance policy would cost less. And even though we are actually getting older and having more driving experience, which again would mean our insurance rate should go down, our rates continue to go up. Why is that? So before I address the specific things we can actually target and do to try and lower our rate, let me answer those two fundamental questions because I hear them all the time. So let's tackle the first one. My car is getting older. Meaning if there's a loss, the insurance company would have less money they would have to pay to get the car back for us, right? Or to reimburse us or to pay for the value of the car, depending on the policy type and provisions. So if the car is older and worth less, why does the premium not go down? The answer is it actually does. Here's the key. If you're looking at your insurance policy, your total premium, the total premium that's there is going to reflect many different factors, not just the vehicle you're driving. It's going to affect, be affected by your driving record, your driving history. It's going to also be impacted by things like general inflation and costs of repairs. All sorts of factors, depending on what state you're in, will impact what your auto insurance premium is based on. However, if you really want to look at the line by line, you can check and see, and as your vehicle gets older, and as the cost and exposure that the insurance carrier has goes down, the premium that you're actually paying for that vehicle goes down as well. Not everyone thinks to look at the individual line items on your insurance policy. I'm aghast. That's not something you look forward to doing every day, to just stop and read over your policy and look at the details. I know, not the most fun thing in the world, but if you did, you would actually see that that particular cost actually does go down, which is good. The next part of the next question was, as we drive more, we gain more driving experience. Therefore, with higher driving, higher number of years of driving experience, we would expect to pay less for insurance because we have more experienced driving. And again, that too actually does occur. The number of years you have, the number of years you're driving has an impact on your auto insurance premium. Depending on what states you're in, you might actually see that more than in other states. Some states have regulations that allow the insurance carriers to utilize certain information such as a credit score or other location data where you live, things of that nature to impact your insurance rate. And some rely more heavily on your actual driving experience. How many tickets, how many accidents, how long have you been driving, things like that. Now, some states will even allow insurance companies to give a different rate for men or women. Statistically, if there's a difference and they can show that, there'll be different rates. As you are getting older and as you are driving for longer period of time, the portion of your automobile insurance that is covering you, usually it's your liability portion, will actually go down. So, We're seeing that these particular items actually are impacted as we would expect them to. But our insurance premium just continues to go up. Why does that happen? Let me try and unwind this mystery of this knot that we get tied in. Because we know if we're a good driver for a long time and our car is getting older, we expect the premium to go down. So why in the world 
if you're telling me, and I'm telling you, that those things are actually happening, does our overall premium go up? There are many factors that go into that. And what we're seeing right now, countrywide, are incredibly higher rates of automobile insurance. Part of that has to do with the types of vehicles that are being driven. For example, the high adoption of EV vehicles is making your general premium higher. Why is that? EV vehicles are much more expensive to service. They're much more expensive to replace. They're much more expensive to purchase. If you have damage to your EV vehicle, it could cost 20, 30, even 40% more to repair it than it would if you were driving an internal combustion engine vehicle. It's just a fact, it's just numbers. Especially these days, we're looking at potential drag and lag time between how long it takes to even get the parts to repair the vehicles. The insurance company has to pay those bills and has to deal with potentially a rental car for you during that time your vehicle's out if you have that coverage. So we have an expensive vehicle category that's coming in and offsetting the decrease you might be getting over time for being a good driver and for having more driving experience and your car getting older. However, because the vehicle is, you're starting out with a more expensive vehicle, your rate is simply going to be going up, not down. Another issue that we're seeing are, if you look at vehicles over time, they're getting faster. Fair enough, they're getting faster. There are a lot of sports utility vehicles, SUVs, things like that. People are buying faster, bigger cars. And guess what happens? A larger car in an accident causes more damage both to the vehicle and to the people inside. So even though, again, you're doing all the right things, because your vehicle is simply larger and heavier and potentially causing more damage, the claims amount that has to be paid out in an accident tends to be higher than it would be, let's say, 10 years ago. So once again, not your fault per se. It's not us as consumers that are doing something. It's collectively what's happening because we have vehicles that are costing more money. And because those vehicles are costing more money, the insurance premium, of course, follows right along and ends up having to pick up that tab as well. And that as annoying as it is, makes sense, right? If it costs more to repair a car, the premium is going to cost more money. If it costs more in injury because a vehicle causes more damage and causes more injury, then the premium is going to cost more money as well. So since we've covered that briefly, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, let's start talking about what we can control, things that we can do right now and today to try and lower the rate that we're paying on our auto insurance. Remember, if you miss any part of this show, you can catch a repeat as a podcast, or you can also find us on YouTube. Let's talk about that in just a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the Window to the Magic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this, something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello. This is Carl Sussman with Insurance Hour, and welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about auto insurance. We're going to keep right on talking about auto insurance. Remember, if you have missed any part of the show, you can catch it as a podcast or on YouTube anytime. Also remember, our show is syndicated all across California, reaching over 30 million listeners. So make sure if you have questions, you call me, 559-656-0317, or shoot an email to questions at insurancehour.com. Before the break, we were specifically talking about what some of the reasons are that our insurance premium is going up, even though we're doing things that should make our rates go down. So I want to give you some specific things that you can do right now to lower your auto insurance rate. Things that are more directly in your control. We can't control 
I suppose we could to some extent, the fact that vehicles are heavier or cost more money, things of that nature. But we can do certain things. And the first thing we can do is check to be sure that we have a competitive rate. Now, depending on where you are, you might be in a state where it's difficult to get auto insurance rates because the insurance market is very tight. If that's the case, you might want to spend a little bit of time and not get frustrated because when there's not a lot of competition out there, the rates are going to be higher and there's just nothing we can do about it. We're sort of stuck. For people that are in a state where there might be more options for shopping, shop around. Shop around, shop around. And it's not even that hard these days. You don't have to pick up the phone. You don't have to go driving around town finding offices. You can go online and you can check out some of the carriers that you're familiar with Check out carriers that maybe you know of from friends or relatives that say they have a pretty good deal and check with them and try and get a proposal. Make sure that when you are shopping around that you're comparing apples to apples. Don't assume that by saying I want full coverage in air quotes that you're going to get the same coverage limits or types from one insurance company to another. By the way, secret tip, there's no such thing as full coverage. What does that mean? Does that mean they're going to cover you for everything no matter what? That sounds like full, but that's not possible, right? I mean, there are limits, there's coverage types, there's all sorts of deductible options, things of that nature. So don't assume that just because you say full coverage that something magical happens. That's not an insurance term, by the way. That's just a general phrase that people will use. So when you're shopping around, make sure that you actually look at your policy. Look at the limits of liability. 100, 300, 100. Uninsured motorist, there's liability, there's uninsured motorist, there's medical payments, there's comprehensive, there's collision, there's rental car. There might be coverage for additional improvements to the vehicle, things you've done, special sound systems, all sorts of things might be on that policy. So when you're shopping around, be sure you're comparing apples to apples. And keep in mind when you're doing it, a little education for you, right? When you're noticing some of these things, you might say, you know, I, 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 yeah, I put a couple extra bucks in this car because I wanted a fancy stereo or, wow, I think I'm aging myself. Do people even do that anymore? Well, the coverage is there. Or maybe they've added a trailer hitch, things that might actually make the vehicle cost more and you've added that to your policy. You might decide that it's just not worth insuring that specific amount, right? You've had it enough years and you think, you know what? It is what it is. If I can save money by removing that coverage for the improvement that you've made to the car, the addition that you've made to the car, maybe you want to do that, then just go for it. So, when you're shopping, make sure you're comparing apples to apples. And if you're not, be sure you understand what it is that you're not getting, right? What it is that you're subtracting from your actual new quote that you're getting and you're looking at. The next thing that you can do to try and save money is to look and see what type of insurance policy you have other than an auto insurance policy. And does the insurance company that you're with offer that coverage? For example, your auto insurance policy might be with company A and your homeowner's insurance coverage might be with company B or your renter's insurance policy. Or if you own a condominium, that policy, it might be with another insurance company. You've heard about it. Bundle your policies. Again, not an insurance phrase, just a buzz phrase that people have started picking up on. This has been around forever, by the way. There have almost, I can't even remember, I can go back in my mind 30 years and there have been discounts for having more than one policy with an insurance company. It's nothing new. There's nothing, oh my gosh, something revolutionary by putting the same policies with the same company. There's always been a discount for it. However, now, because your auto insurance price is higher than it used to be, the discount is a percentage, right? So a higher premium with a percentage means a higher savings. You're not saving a flat dollar amount no matter what. You're saving a percentage of parts of your auto policy by putting them together. So check with the carrier that has, we'll, we'll just call it your property insurance, which could be, you could be a renter and have a renter's policy, a condominium owner and have a condominium owner's policy, or a homeowner and you have a homeowner's insurance policy. Check with that company and see if there's a way to move the policies to be together. Because not only will you get a discount, almost always on your home pol on your automobile policy, you will probably get a discount on the property insurance policy as well. Double duty, right? So now you're able to save money, not just on the car insurance, but on the home insurance. It's work. I will tell you that right now, because now when you're talking about potentially shopping around your property insurance, there's a whole other list of things you have to look out for and try and be sure that the, co the coverages are what you believe them to be. There are no boilerplate policies. There is a 
template, you might say, of what typical policies will cover. But there is nothing that says that one policy, whether it be auto or property, is going to be exactly like another from another insurance company. This is an interesting issue because I run into this from time to time where people will say, well, I went from this company to that company and the price was cheaper. And I'll say, okay, let's, can we take a peek at the policies? They'll send me a copy of their old policy and their new policy, and they are nowhere near the same. There are, unfortunately, some unscrupulous folks out there that don't pay attention to what the coverage is the client has. They'll just say, hey, I can save you money, and they'll give them half the limits of liability, or they'll take their deductible from 500 to 5,000. They'll do these things. I don't like to talk ill of people that do what I do for a living, Direct carriers sometimes might do this as well, inadvertently or deliberately to try and get the business. Just be aware that whenever you're looking to change from one company to another, whether it be your auto insurance, your property insurance, whatever it might be, just keep in mind, it's on you to make sure you look and check and be sure that the limits are the same and not just those limits, but some of the actual characteristics of the policy that might be different. Remember, there is no generic or standard type of policy. You can't, it's not a commodity. It's not like saying one one banana is the same as another banana or one dollar bill is the same as another dollar bill. There is no standard that way. Policies are different. And there's differences on the main sheet, that deck sheet that you look at, right? That shows your name, the address, the policy number, things like that. And there are differences actually within the policy that you want to pay attention to. So let's take a quick break. And when we come back, I want to get into some additional discounts that you can try and work with to try and lower your auto insurance premium. Not even just discounts, but things you can do to the policy and things that you can do in general to lower your auto insurance premium. Remember, if you've missed any part of the show, you can just grab it as a podcast or check on YouTube. It's there. And believe it or not, on YouTube, you can actually see me. Woo, just what you wanted to do, right? What does this weird guy sound like? Anyway, well, that's the way you can find out. Just go on YouTube and search for Insurance Hour. So we'll talk a little bit more about ways to save on your auto insurance as soon as we come back. In today's uncertain times, navigating the California insurance marketplace can feel like a journey through uncharted waters. That's where Sussman Insurance Agency steps in, guiding you with the wisdom of experience and the care of family. We at Sussman Insurance Agency understand the complexities of finding the right coverage in these challenging times. With decades of expertise and a heritage spanning two generations, we're more than just insurance agents. We are your trusted advisors, your navigators in the sea of insurance options. Treating our clients like family isn't just a phrase, it's our commitment. We listen, we understand, and we provide solutions tailored to your unique needs. Why? Because to us, you're a part of the Sussman family. Don't let the tides of uncertainty sway you. Anchor your trust in Sussman Insurance Agency. Call us today at 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com. Have specific questions? Drop us an email at sales at sussmaninsurance.com. At Sussman Insurance Agency, we're not just in the business of policies. We're in the business of peace of mind. Sussman Insurance Agency, navigating your insurance life together. Hello, hello, and welcome back. This is Carl Sussman with Insurance Hour. Thanks so much for being here and taking charge of your insurance and learning and trying to see how you can best utilize your insurance policies without paying more than you have to. Remember, you can catch me live. You can also catch this on YouTube. You can catch it as a podcast. You can catch it everywhere. Make sure you also call in with any of your insurance-related questions. You can call 559-656-0317 email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com. Or if you want to talk to an agent right now, right now, just dial pound 250 on your phone, use the keyword insurance. And with a little bit of luck, you'll immediately get your answer over to an agent that can help you. Before the break, we were talking about ways that you can save money on your auto insurance. Prices are going up. That's just a fact. And we talked a little bit about that in the very beginning of the show as to why. So now let's cover some more ways that you can lower your auto insurance. Because let's face it, we could all use less premium is good as long as it's not sacrificing the coverage that we need, right? So in that same vein, one of the things you could also do in addition to what we've talked about so far is make sure you're getting all of the discounts you have coming. Now, you might assume that Everything is so computerized these days that if you're eligible for a discount, you will simply get it. That's sort of true because there are some discounts that the system, right, depending on what insurance company you're working with, will automatically catch. For example, if you haven't had tickets or accidents for a certain period of time, state dependent, 
you might automatically get a discount for being a good driver. However, system's not perfect. System is not perfect. In addition, there are discounts that you might be eligible for that you don't even know about, so you're not looking for them. I'll give you an example. If you're over a certain age in certain states, and certain states you don't even have to be, you can get you can take what's called a defensive driving course. Most of these are online now because it is what isn't. So you sit there for a handful of hours, you watch videos, and they give you some ideas about how to be a safer driver, and you get a certificate. That certificate is something that you can actually take to your insurance carrier, and they will give you a discount for having taken that course. Now, the system can't catch that automatically because you just don't have it. So you need to be able to make sure that you're proactive in finding out what discounts are out there, and then you go out and do the things you can do to qualify for them. The defensive driving discount is just one of them. If you have younger drivers in the household, you can also look to see if there's a discount for people that have good student discounts, and that might be dependent on what their GPA is, because that's what kids these days need, right? More pressure to have a better, to have a higher GPA. It's not enough that they have to fight and compete like crazy to try and get into college. But now we're going to put more pressure on them and say, hey, you better get that GPA up because it's going to lower the premium I'm paying for the car insurance. I tell you, the, the generation now that's learning to drive and graduating from high school and going through that, they have it so much harder than we did in our generation. Is that making me sound old? Get off my lawn! Uh, Anyway, so be aware that there are discounts. There's defensive driving. You have to go out and find out if your carrier offers it. There's good student. You have to go out and ask, does your carrier offer it? Another discount that you can ask for are garage discounts, meaning is the vehicle parked in a garage or on the street? That will impact the premium in some states. Another discount, and this is not one of my favorites, is an alarm discount. Remember the days of the... Eh, eh, woo, woo. Yeah, don't don't hold me to that. You know what? This is the those are the car alarms that just used to have a siren that would go on and just make noise, and nobody cared, and nobody paid attention, and it just bugged the heck heck out of everybody. But believe it or not, there are still some states that will offer a discount if you have an alarm on your car, and that's because as annoying as it is, the noise doesn't really help. But what helps is those alarms typically will make the car unable to drive. So so thieves can't steal the car when the alarm's going off. Other discounts that you can look out for are uh, vehicle tracking devices. So if there's a car that's stolen and the vehicle is able to be tracked, the insurance carrier might give you a discount for that as well. These discounts are all very state specific. So depending on where you are, some of these discounts might be available, some of them might not. But again, You have to be proactive. You need to ask. You need to ask the insurance, your insurance agent or insurance broker, or if you're with a carrier directly, you need to ask them. They're not going to volunteer and just pick up the phone one day and say, hey there, so-and-so, did you know you could save money by doing blah, blah, blah? Well, some agents and brokers might. But the majority of them probably don't. So you need to be proactive and ask about these discounts because they are out there. There are discounts. There are ways that you can save money on your auto insurance. Now, another thing that you can do, and this one is is very overlooked, is reach out to your agent or broker or the insurance company and tell them how you use the vehicle. I know, it sounds crazy. Well, I drive it. Isn't that what most people do with cars? Yes, you do. But the question is how often and how. Are you driving your car up and back to work? Are you driving the car on appointments to go to see clients? Are you working from home half the time and you're going into the office maybe one or two days a week? Drastically different exposures for you and your car, right? Would you not therefore expect the premium you're paying to be drastically different as well? You should. If not, keep listening because you will learn this stuff and then you'll understand and you'll be able to do things more along the lines to saving money and understanding at the same time. So check with your carrier, check with the brokers and your agent and make sure that they have you properly rated. Something else that you can do, and again, it depends on the state you're in, is you can do something called certifying your miles or guaranteeing how many miles you drive. Now, what that looks like is the, you would submit some type of documentation to an insurance company or to an agent or broker who gets it to them. And it says, here on this date, my odometer was X. And then 90 days later, here my odometer reading was Y. 
Pretty simple math. They can say, well, in 90 days, they drove X number of miles. Therefore, we can extrapolate that out to being X number of miles that are being driven every year. By doing that, you're giving the insurance carrier the ability to really see what their exposure is. How often is this car out on the road? Is it a lot? Is it not a lot? And the rate will be, a, will be reflecting that as well. You got to ask. Some carriers will give you a discount just for going through that process, regardless of what the results are. So you really, really want to ask. Also, some states have pay per mile driving programs where you will literally pay only for the miles you drive. So they'll come up with an estimate of how many miles you'll drive. If you drive under it, you have a credit. If you drive over it, they'll bill you a little bit more. But again, you have to be proactive on this stuff. If you're looking to save money, you have to do stuff, unfortunately. And especially these days, because the rates are going up the way they are, it's on you. The onus is really on you. You're the one paying the money, right? To check, ask questions, understand, and see what you can do to lower your premium. Now, we do have some other ways that I want to talk about. There's lots of ways. We're going to keep going right after the break. So when we do come back, we're going to talk about additional ways to save money on your car insurance. If you have questions, please give me a call anytime, 559 559- 656-0317, or you can send an email to questions at insurancehour.com, and we'll get back to you in just a minute. I'm sure many small business owners out there have been hearing a lot about tax advisory, but aren't quite sure what it is or how it can help. Let Semaphore guide you and help fulfill your tax advisory needs at SemaphoreHQ.com. A tax advisor is a part-time, on-demand financial expert who can help you with scaling and tracking your financials and making smart financial decisions. How do you know if you need tax advisory? The answer depends on your stage, size, and goals. Tax advisory can help you address these issues without the cost or commitment of hiring a full-time CFO. A tax advisor can work with you on a project basis, a retainer basis, or a hybrid basis, depending on your needs and budget. If you are interested in learning more about how tax advisory can help you scale your business, please contact Semaphore today at 720-766-8869 or check us out at semaphorehq.com. That's S-E-M-A-P-H-O-R-E-H-Q.com. Hello, hello, and welcome back. This is Carl Sussman with Insurance Hour. Thank you so much for spending some time here with me, learning about insurance, learning what insurance is about, and using your brain to find out ways to save money on top of it. What could be better? Learn about insurance, save money on insurance. It's all loads of fun. You can catch me live and, of course, call in with your questions at 559-656-0317. You can send an email anytime to questions at insurancehour.com. Or if you want to talk to the agent right now, all you have to do is dial pound 250 on your phone, use the keyword insurance, and then voila, an agent will be there to help you. Before the break, we were talking a little bit about ways to save money on your auto insurance. Actually, not a little bit, a lot. And we're going to continue doing that. But before I do that, I thought maybe you'd be interested to know because you're, our station now and this show is syndicated in so many places. Where do you think the most insurance ins- auto insurance is? Where do you think the least expensive auto insurance is? Are you curious? I am. So guess what? I did a little bit of research for you. So let's start out with the least expensive states. And let's see if you can get this right. The number one least expensive state, or, or states really, is Maine and Vermont. Really? Maine and Vermont have the lowest average auto insurance rates. After that, it goes to New Hampshire, And then Hawaii or in Idaho, North Carolina, and finally, Iowa. Those are the places where auto insurance is the least expensive. So on the same idea, we're talking about how to save money on your car insurance. If you want to save money, go to those places because that's where it's the least expensive on average. All right. Now, the other end of the spectrum, where do you think the most expensive auto insurance rates are? Anybody? Come on. Think about it. I think we'll be surprised. I was surprised. I'm going to count backward from the fifth most expensive down to the most expensive. Are you ready? The fifth most expensive place on average for auto insurance is in Michigan. I didn't see that coming. Number four is New Jersey. Yeah, insert joke here, New Jersey. Number three is Florida, which is very interesting because Florida, if they're number three for auto insurance, they're also number two or number one most expensive right now for property insurance. Wow, Florida. Whatever the Department of Insurance and the regulators are doing and the uh, the general way they're working with insurance in Florida does not seem to be doing well for consumers. 
Number two most expensive in the country is New York. So look at that. We have New York and New Jersey. That is an expensive place to drive, my friends. And are you ready for the crown jewel? Where is the most expensive state to have auto insurance? Any guess? Louisiana. Totally didn't see that coming. Louisiana. What's with you guys? You guys have very expensive car insurance. If you compare Louisiana to, let's say, Maine or Vermont, the most expensive to the least expensive, you're talking about a real difference in cost. You could be talking a double, triple, four times, five times the rate. Why? Complicated. Lots of reasons, everything from the types of vehicles that are driven to how people drive to the regulatory environment to the laws on the books, all sorts of things go into auto insurance. Competition, the number of carriers that are riding in those places, there's a lot. But this is something I want you to keep in mind. These are things that, this is statistically accurate, right? You know how an average works. You take two numbers, you divide them by the number by number two, and you get an average. When you have these numbers and they show such a dramatic change and dramatic difference in the amount of premium that people are paying, you have to stop and ask yourself, how much of that is the area? How much of that is the driver's behavior? How much of that is the regulatory environment? And it's something that insurance nerds like me like to talk about all the time. You might not. I do. So take, so take that. Let's get back to some more specifics of things we can do to try and lower our auto insurance cost. Okay. Now, one of the things that you can also do to try and lower your auto insurance rate is go through your coverage type and see if there's anything in there that you really don't need anymore. For example, you might have been paying a surcharge because you were driving a vehicle in a carpool. Driving in a carpool will obviously create more of an exposure because the understanding is that you're driving more people and you're driving more. If you're no longer in a carpool, go ahead and remove that coverage specific endorsement from your policy. This goes under the general umbrella of just review all of your coverages because there might be some things in there that you need. There might be some things in there that you don't need anymore. Remember, when your lifestyle changes, when things are changing in your general usage of your vehicle, the insurance carriers, your agents and brokers, they have no way of knowing. You have to actually stop and say, okay, what have I changed since the, I bought this policy that might impact my rate? Well, there are certain things, as we talked about on the show earlier, that will happen automatically. If you've changed a car, the price will change. If you're driving for, you know, as you're getting older and you're driving longer, the rate will go down. By the way, though, put a pin in that. You get to a certain age and then the rate starts to go up again. This is, again, just based on statistics. When people reach a certain age, then they tend to have more accidents. So there's a sweet spot. And the sweet spot is different in every state and in every type of situation, depending on the vehicle and the area. So keep in mind when I, when I keep saying that as you gain more driving experience, you're going to pay a lower premium. That's true to a point because you get to that point where, you know, you start to have more accidents. And that could be all sorts of reasons from lack of attention to vision issues to just, you know, we get a little older and we get a little bit less sharp when it comes to some of these things, right? Driving is something you want to be completely focused on to try and prevent having accidents, right? And what's interesting is when you're younger, you're sharper. And unfortunately, what we're finding is a lot of people are driving distracted. You've heard about distracted driving. So even though younger people are potentially better drivers on some angle because they're sharper, they're more alert, their vision is typically more acute, all these things, their reflexes are sharper because they're lacking, number one, experience in driving, and number two, they tend to be the most distracted drivers out there. That's offsetting that. So younger drivers still tend to be a much higher risk than a middle-aged driver. I, I think the sweet spot's probably somewhere between age 35 and 55. is probably right about where the industry has found this age, this group of people tends to perform the best. And when I say perform the best, meaning they're having the least number of tickets, they're having the least number of accidents, all right? Sorry for that tangent, but it's important to keep that in mind, that yes, you're gaining driving experience, but at some point, it's really on you to be sure that you're staying focused and doing everything you can to drive safely. You see the mantra that keeps coming up here? I'm telling you things that you can do to lower your rate. And the most obvious I haven't mentioned directly, so let me say it right now, drive safely. 
drive safely. If you do get into a car accident, if you do get a ticket, that is going to impact your auto insurance rate. Now, you can't necessarily change that after the fact with one exception, you actually can. Depending on the state you're in, most states are this way, if you get a moving violation, which is a fancy word for a ticket, let's say you're speeding or you roll the stop sign, then you can go to traffic school most of the time and that ticket will no longer show up on your driving record. Not only will it not show on your driving record, it's not going to impact your insurance rate. I tell people this all the time. Go to traffic school. Don't wait. Don't say, I'll just pay the ticket. It's going to cost you a lot more money than the ticket in the increase in the cost of your insurance. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, more on saving on your auto insurance. We all love children, and many of us have an old car, truck, or van in the driveway. Find the Children has a great way for you to put your unwanted vehicle to good use. Keep listening. Every year, thousands of kids go missing. Trust me, it's a parent's worst nightmare. When a child goes missing, every moment counts, and you need all of the help you can get. Find the Children is a nonprofit organization dedicated to locating missing children and bringing them home safely. You can help support their mission by donating your car, truck, van, or SUV. A towing company will come and pick up your car for free, running or not, and the donation of your car is tax deductible. Your help is providing the funds they need to continue their services. Call now, donate your old vehicle to find the children and get free pickup. Here's the number. 800-403-6517. 800-403-6517. 800-403-6517. That's 800-403-6517. Hello, hello. Welcome back. This is Carl Sussman with Insurance Hour. Thank you so much for spending some time with me here today and learning about insurance. I know it is the most exciting topic imaginable. Who wouldn't like to just spend their days talking about insurance? Well, I do. I'm the insurance nerd, I guess, because I do enjoy this stuff. I look forward to talking about it. I look forward to learning about it. I look forward to staying involved in trying to make the products that are available for consumers more affordable, more comprehensive, and most importantly, driving competition so we have more choices, which will give premiums a dive. All right, before the break, we were talking about how to save money on your car insurance, but don't forget, you can reach out to me directly anytime by calling 559-656-0317. You can send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. And if you need to talk to an agent right away, right away, you can just dial pound 250 on your phone, keyword insurance, boom, you'll get an agent, all right? Now, before the break, like I said, we were talking about ways to save money on our car insurance. And the most obvious one I seem to have not mentioned, and I wanna mention it again, drive safely. I don't believe there's a state in the country that will charge more money for someone that has tickets and accidents versus someone who does not. And that makes sense, right? If you're getting speeding tickets, what do you think the likelihood is that you're going to have an accident versus someone that's not getting speeding tickets, right? This is pretty logical. So make sure you're driving safely and don't drive distracted. Distracted driving has become one of the biggest thorns in the side of the entire insurance industry and consumers in general. It's unbelievable. Have you been ever out driving and you look next to you and the person driving is literally like this, they're touching, they're holding their phone up and they're looking at it. They're not even close to looking forward. I mean, not looking forward at all. You wanna do a little something for fun? Hold up your phone in front of you. Hold it up for a minute. Look at the screen, stop and look in the distance. Look in the screen, stop, look in the distance. It's imperceivable unless you're really paying attention, but there's a period of time that it takes your eyes to focus on something close and then focus on something in the distance. Add to that the time that it takes for your brain to register what it is, and then for your brain to send signal to your body to actually turn the wheel, hit the brake, or do something. This is a lot of time that ends up being wasted because you don't have the ability to do that. You can't look at your phone and look at the road at the same time. It's not possible. So accident frequency because of distracted driving is through the roof. And that's just for someone that's glancing at their phone. People are actually driving and texting, full conversations. If you do the math, the time it takes you to take out, to look at your phone, type a message, and look, and you, you might say, oh, I can do this, I can look up and down, and look up and down, up and down. 
you are driving hundreds and hundreds, depending on how fast you're driving, hundreds of feet without looking at the road. One estimate I read not too long ago said for someone to just pick up their phone and type in yes and put the phone back down while they're on the freeway, they will actually travel the distance of a football field. Imagine your car driving with nobody paying attention to what's in front of them for the entire distance of a football field while going 65 miles an hour. It, you might think, no, no. Yeah, that's what's happening. So distracted driving is one thing you definitely want to avoid, not just because it's dangerous as heck, but if you do have a, get, an, get involved in an accident because of it, first of all, you don't want to get in an accident. That goes without saying. You're going to pay for having damage to your vehicle. You're going to pay a higher premium for the damage you might have caused to someone else's car or other people. Your insurance premium is going to reflect that. So it goes without saying to me, but I'm saying it to be sure you're clear on it. One of the best ways to save money on your car insurance is to be a safe driver. That's like burying the lead. I should have started with that, right? But keep it in mind. And some of those things to keep in mind, again, defensive driving classes teach you things like don't be a distracted driver. You need to take some time and actually remember that driving is dangerous. It's inherently very, very dangerous. I remember growing up, my grandmother told me, uh, my grandmother was uh, from Hungary, so I can remember this like it was yesterday with this thick Hungarian accent when I was just getting uh, my driver's license, and she said that when you get a driver's license, it's like they're handing you a loaded gun, and you have that gut loaded gun now. You're having a, a license for a loaded gun. And I remember thinking, I saw my car, what are you talking about? But I understand it over time because you can kill people so easily with your vehicle, so easily. And again, other than the obvious that that's not a good thing to do, you're going to pay a higher premium if you're having accidents. You're going to pay a higher premium if you're having tickets. So let's avoid those things, right? Enough said. Drive safely, pay lower premium. Drop the mic. That's where it goes, okay? In addition to all these topics about auto insurance and discounts that we can do, I want you to also keep in mind there are many different types of liability and physical damage coverages that are on automobile insurance policies, right? It's not just an auto policy, right? Just like I said that there's no such thing as a um, full coverage, there's no such thing as just an auto policy. Automobile policies are cut up into many different parts. There's liability insurance for damage that's caused to a third party. There's property damage for damage that you might cause to someone else's property, like a car or a physical, like a house that you might run into or a fence. There's uninsured and underinsured motorists. This is coverage that's going to pay for you and people in your car. If you have an accident with somebody that does not have insurance or does not have enough insurance, that'll help pay for you. There's collision coverage, which is going to pay physical damage for your vehicle while the vehicle is in motion. There's comprehensive coverage that's going to pay for physical damage to your vehicle while the vehicle is not in motion. Put a pin in that. If you strike an object that is alive, like a deer, I hate saying this, but it's true. Animal strikes are considered comprehensive claims. I don't know why. If somebody does, please let me know. If you're a claims expert, please fill me in on this. I've always wondered why they decided to make that. So if you're driving around and you end up with a deer through your windshield, if you don't end up in a psychiatric ward, I think I would if that actually happened, you can know that if you have comprehensive coverage, that's where you should expect to see coverage for that. Gap insurance is another type of coverage you can get on your auto insurance. Gap insurance is going to pay the difference between what the value of your car is, which is what insurance policies will typically pay, and what you might owe on the vehicle. Okay, So auto insurance, you can't just say an auto insurance policy because all of those things that I just listed, that's just a sample of things you can get on an auto policy. And on top of that, all of those have different limits within them, different deductibles within them. So you can see the number of permutations that you might be looking at when you're getting an auto policy or an auto quote and you're comparing is vast. So don't assume that one policy is the same as another is the same as another. These are not commodities. They are different. They're inherently different in their limits and what they will pay for coverage with. All right. When we come back, we're going to have our final stretch. We're going to talk a little bit more about discounts. We're going to sum it all up. I'm going to go over the highlights. And I did get a voicemail that came in. I'm not sure why the switchboard didn't get it, but I'm going to answer the question of the person that called in. Thank you so much for that call. And we will go from there. Again, I'm Carl Sussman, and you are tuned in to Insurance Hour. Back in a flash. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the magic podcast show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the Window to the Magic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello, this is Carl Sussman with Insurance Hour, and welcome back for our final segment. Thank you so much for hanging in there and sticking in here with me and listening and learning and understanding and hopefully gaining some ways to learn about saving money on your auto insurance. And we're talking a little bit about insurance coverage types so you can be more in tune with what options there are and what discounts might impact what. Remember, you can call me with questions anytime, even if I'm not on the air, you'll get a voicemail. Let me know if you'd like to have your call read on the air or if you just want me to answer the question. That number is 559-656-0317. If you'd like to email anytime, you can email questions at insurancehour.com. You can actually even send a text message, if you like, to um, 559-656-0317. Same phone number. Voicemail, text message, you can send it and we will get it. And like I said, let me know if you want your question read on the air, if you want something specific or if you just want that general question. Remember, if you missed any part of this show, we had a lot of good information today. Make sure you go back. You can grab it as a podcast. Just search for Insurance Hour in your favorite podcast app or jump on YouTube, search for Insurance Hour. And not only will you get to see the entire show, we've got all of our past shows there as well. And lucky you, you'll get to see me. I know, it's your dream in life. All right, let's jump right in. I wanted to talk a little bit as we close up today about all of these discounts and how they impact your auto insurance rate and the things you can control and the things you can't control, right? We understand that insurance is not perfect. If you don't, if you think it's fair, stop thinking that. Insurance is not fair. No matter what you do, you could do everything right. If everyone else is doing everything wrong, okay, you are going to end up footing part of that bill. So that is just a fact and it stinks and it's not fair, and you know the old saying, life stopped being fair in kindergarten, probably before that. But we want to do what we can do individually to keep our rates lower by taking some of the steps we've talked about today to lower our auto insurance rates. As a society, as a city, as a state, as a country, there are changes that need to go into place. There's a change in general philosophy that needs to happen so people take a little more personal responsibility about what they're doing and how it impacts not only themselves, their pocketbook, but everybody else's. Because this is something that impacts everybody. You never ever think about it, but you having a ticket or you having an accident, not only does that impact your driving premium, your insurance premium, it potentially impacts somebody else's driver's insurance premium, depending on the accident. And all of these claims being paid, all of these types of claims that happen impact the premium that everybody pays, not just you, not just the person that you might have an accident with. We're really all in this together. Insurance is a system that takes big data, right? It takes the large data of all of these things that are happening, driving records, areas you live in, the time you drive, how much you drive, how fast you drive, where you live, how long have you been driving? It's just state dependent. You have no idea how much information is out there that will help an insurance carrier try and determine what the accurate rate is. Believe it or not, and I'm not towing the insurance company line here, but it's truth. Insurance companies really want to charge the exact premium they need for the exact exposure they have. As close to that ideal as they can get, the better they are. Because if they can get right on that spot, that actual number is achievable for them, they'll be able to make money. 
That's what carriers do. They want to charge a premium that's sufficient enough to make profit while at the same time generate and drive in that particular type of business. Some insurance carriers just are specialized in people that have multiple tickets and accidents. That's their specialty. Some carriers specialize in people that do not have a lot of tickets and accidents. Carriers have different appetites and you need to be sure that you're with a carrier that fits your, that you're with a carrier whose appetite fits what you are. If you're someone that has a lot of tickets and a lot of accidents or just a lot of tickets, whatever it might be, not passing judgment, just saying, make sure you're with a carrier that has pricing for that because there'll be a group of carriers that are priced for people that are higher risk and there's a group of carriers that will be priced for people that are a lower risk. You don't want to be in either of the other. You could literally be the best driver in the world, never have a ticket, never have an accident. But if you're with one of those carriers that specializes in higher risk drivers, you will be paying a lot more money than if you had been with the group of carriers that specializes in lower risk. Same way going the other direction. And I, that's what I see more often than not. These people will be with one of these carriers that are priced and designed for low risk drivers. They have a few tickets or they have a, you know, two, three accidents and their rate goes up fourfold, fivefold. And they're saying, whoa. And we have to try and understand. And hopefully I can educate you with this point right now. If, you, if that happens, you need to check around and see because it might make sense for you to switch to one of those other carriers that's priced for that, that is designed for that, that has their systems, that has their underwriting, that has their actuaries tuned in for people that have that type of driving experience. It's, again, one more reason that insurance is not a commodity and it's not the same. Carriers have different appetites. Carriers have different programs. They have different lengths of time that they might take to surcharge you for a ticket or surcharge you for an accident. State specific, again, this changes across state lines, but overall, they're always going to be what are called preferred carriers for people that have no tickets or accidents or very few, or if they do, they happen very infrequently. There are standard carriers. They're right in the middle. They can deal with the ticket now and then. They're priced all right for it. And then substandard. And substandard, again, it's not a bad thing. These are people that drive very expensive cars, have tons of accidents, things of that nature. They're priced for it. And what I mean by priced for it means they're priced less than these other two places because their entire pool of drivers is different and they're collecting premium in a different way that they can offset the cost. So yes, you can actually pay less money with one of those carriers than with a preferred carrier depending on the situation because that's what they're geared for. So what I hope you picked up from today's show is that there are many things that you can do to save money on your auto insurance. But the one thing that works in every state and in every situation is to take the time, read your policy, work with an agent or broker who can help you understand the coverage you have, help you understand what the limits are that you have, why you have them, do you need them, work together and find out where you could potentially trim the fat from places that you might not need coverage anymore, right? On top of that, you can also look to see if there's another carrier that has better appetite for your particular situation. With that, I will remind you that you can reach me anytime. Call 559-656-0317. Send an email to questions at insurancehour.com or dial pound 250 if you want to talk with an agent right away. I will be here again. We will talk some more. Remember, if you missed any part of the show, jump on YouTube, search for Insurance Hour. Jump on your podcast app, search for Insurance Hour. You'll find this show today in its entirety, as well as well as a bunch of other shows that we've done over the months and years. Everything is there for you. And again, I thank you. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559 559- 656-0317. Educating and entertaining Californians one insurance policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. This show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.